I'm going to talk to you a little bit about wind power in urban areas today and how we've made it a more viable option with this product right here. So right now most of the power in the wind industry is in large wind farms that are away from cities. However, many viable alternatives are developing in urban areas. And the key advantage of this is it's close to where the power is used. When you have to transport the power over a long distance, up to 40% can be lost in the transmission line. So by producing it right in the urban area where it's going to be used, we can save a lot of power. Some of the problems with power in urban areas are that the wind speeds are generally lower and the wind direction is a lot less predictable. So it's hard to decide where to put a turbine. Also, there's not much space in urban areas, so it's difficult to find a good location for a turbine. So we decided to focus our problem area on designs that can be retrofitted to buildings. By retrofitting, we take advantage of buildings that are already there. Some designs have to be built right into the building, and this is difficult to do. It involves you making a whole new architecture and designing a whole new building. So by retrofitting, we take advantage of the buildings that are already there, and we also take advantage of the space that's already being used by these buildings. We don't need more space on the ground. So some of the key criteria in our design were that it has to have a high power output. That's the most important thing. It also has to have minimal cost, not make too much noise, and be durable. Also, ease of maintenance is important because things could go wrong with the turbine over its lifetime, which can last up to 20 years, and it needs to be fixable. Lastly, appearance is important to the public, and safety is very important. If people don't think it's safe, they won't like it in their environment. So at first we looked at some designs that mount to the side of a building. The problems with these are that they're more expensive to install. They're generally less, vis less durable because of the mount is difficult to do. They're harder to maintain. They, are, have a, they don't look as good. And also falling ice is a safety issue, falling off the turbine onto the sidewalk. And it's difficult to decide where to put them because of the unpredictability of wind in corridors between buildings which means that they will generally produce less power. So if you look right here at the power curve for a turbine, you can see that at 5 meters per second, it's producing about a sixth of the power that produces at 10 meters per second. So this is what our design capitalizes on by taking a larger amount of air through the mouth up here and focusing it into a smaller area. This can increase the wind velocity by two by twice as much. And so this makes our design have provide very good power. It's durable. It's easy to maintain because it's on the roof of a tall building. It also doesn't have the safety concerns that side-mounted turbines have. However, its main disadvantage is that when um, the wind changes direction, it can't capture it. It can only capture from one direction. So therefore, the main applications that we're looking at are on top of tall buildings, possibly near seaside or where the wind direction will be constant most of the time. So about the economics of the design, the main cost is in the actual turbine. The outer vent will have minimal cost. And the payback period is still pretty long. We estimated about 15 years. But this could go down as energy prices increase and it will So yeah, it'll go down as energy prices increase and it will go down if it's in an area that we know will have high wind, for example, the seaside building again. And in terms of the results that we've gotten from a prototype, you can see here we've tested with and without a load. So with the load, we got an increase of 23%. That's an increase of voltage from 2.8 volts without the vent to 3.1 volts with the vent. So that shows that it does work. Our real design will have a better increase in power because this turbine 
The power curve doesn't match this at all. It's probably, it's made for educational purposes, so the power is just very high at the beginning. With a real turbine, we'll be able to get a lot faster winds going through it, and therefore capitalize on this peak in the power curve. So we'd expect an increase in power of five to seven times. Okay, that's it.